Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna make some duochrome watercolors. This is gonna be a lot of fun and you can do this. Actually, don't have to have this stuff I'm using here. You can actually use um, mica eyeshadows from the dollar store. You can get real creative with this, but I love this because it's a really easy project if you've never tried making uh, your own watercolors before. I've done it in the past using Dollar Tree, um, the, uh, the mica eyeshadows. I've done it using Perlex before. And I just got these chameleon powders from Let's Resin, and I thought these would be really fun to make watercolors out of because um, they shift. They shift from one color to another once they're hit how they hit the light. So they're really fun to use in crafts and cards and um, sketchbook pages, something that you're actually going to move so the light can hit it different ways. Now I made some uh, metallic watercolors a few years ago. I made uh, this, 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 and this using some mica powders from um, Xanadu Art Studio. I'm not sure if they're still in business anymore, but this is how the uh, the colors look. They're really opaque and really shimmery. And um, what I didn't realize at that time was that you really don't have to over mix and over grind these colors like you do with um, like traditional pigments if you're making a traditional watercolor. And in the past, all I had done was mixed um, gum arabic with mica powders and called it a day and it worked great. So uh, that's all you have to do with these chameleon powders as well. And that's what we're gonna do today. So I will link these down below if you're curious about them. Let's Resin had sent these to me. Uh, and I thought, oh, this would be really fun to do. So um, with these kits, you get a brush. And this set here gives you 10 powders, which I am just going to... Well, you know what? I'm going to take them out and lay them on their side so we can see the color names and um, what colors they are. And I did go through these boxes, actually, and made sure there wasn't any doubles because there were a couple duplicate names, but the colors were different. There are two um, galaxies and two blues, and then there's a gold and a golden, but they are different. So they have sets of 10 or sets of five. Um, just depends on what you what you want. Now, I'm hoping these are all true chameleon colors, meaning they all do shift from one color to another. The 10 set has larger containers, I would say. Let's see, I think it says five grams on it, and these are four fifths of a gram. So it's a little deceiving. This package here, it's like maybe half full. Um, and if you have Perlex powders, there are some Perlex powders that are color shifting. So you may already have some in your stash if you have those. Um, generally, excuse me, generally what I would do with the Perlex powders is I would like stamp something with like clear embossing ink and then use a brush like this just to brush it over and then you would get that color. But I thought it'd be fun to make some watercolors here. So I have a couple different things. You can use whatever you want to put your watercolors in. You could save packaging to use like um, wax melt packaging like I showed you on a Frugal Friday. You can buy full pans or half pans to make your watercolors in and these will fit in your standard tins. That's what I have here. I just have magnets on the back of these but um, I think I'm going to make them in the full pans just because it will be less messy because it's a lot easier to work in this larger area than this smaller area. So a full pan is obviously twice the size of a half pan, hence the name. And I have got some gum arabic. This is a tail end of a bottle. Now this is my old bottle and it's much thicker than the new bottle, but I think that might just be down to the fact that this is like probably 10 years old and has thickened up over the years. They're both the same brand. I think Da Vinci has the best price for gum arabic. I paid under $10 for this eight ounce bottle. I think, I, yeah, I got this one at Jerry's Artorama. Um, you can also get like two ounce bottles of this. They're easier to find. You can't always get the big bottles of this. Um, you probably can right at the Da Vinci website. I've also got some water and a little pipette if I need to dilute anything. And this is actually, I just took the water out of my tea kettle because I knew it had been boiled. And um, we have well water. I've never had any mold issues. Um, with it, but just to be safe. Now, one thing I will tell you that I have had mold issues with before, and that would be using the powdered gum arabic. Um, I know a lot of handmade watercolor makers use this, but I've had mold issues when I've tried to make homemade watercolor with this. Maybe it's because I'm using water from home, but I don't think that's it because I also use water when I use the liquid stuff and I've never had mold. But um, if you're gonna use the powdered gum arabic, which is cheaper, you will need to have a preservative. And I know a lot of handmade watercolor folks use clove oil, so you could do that. I'd rather just use this, it's easier, and um, I don't think it's that, that expensive. I mean, if a bottle like this lasts you 10 years, then I mean, it's not really 
I don't know, I don't think it's really that worth it. What I think you could do with this is mix it with a dry powder, like keep it dry, and then um, when you do, if you do any like stamping and brushing the mica over it mixed with this and you could spritz it with water and set it. I think if you were mixing up some color to use all at once, you'd be fine using this. But I think if you want to store it, let it dry out and store it in a pan, I, I think that's where, because if you're going to keep re-wetting re it, I think that's where you might get the mold issue. Um, it's just, that's my, that's my thoughts anyway. So uh, I won't make all of these with you because that will take a while, but um, I think I'll start with this color because it's really pretty. This is called teal. You can really see it on the little the little seal there. Isn't that pretty? So let's see what, how does this do a duochrome? So let's see, it goes from kind of like a golden green to a blue. You see a bluish purple. See that? Golden green, bluish purple. That's what they mean when they say duochrome or chameleon. So anytime you're seeing these chameleon sets on Amazon, they're pretty affordable. That's what they mean by chameleon. So it's like mica, but the colors shift. I don't know what crazy science is behind there or how it works, but it's just kind of cool. So what I'm going to do is use this baby spoon. I always save stuff like this when my kids were done with baby spoons. And mind you, they're like, you know, they're young adults. Um, I would save them because I would use them for mixing stuff up. Um, and this will like kind of compress a little bit as we add other stuff to it. So I'm getting a couple scoops of the color. I should have been a little neater with that, uh, so I didn't waste any. I spilt a little bit out, but that's not too bad. Now, because this actually has a dropper on it, I can just go in and I can, I can uh, just drop it in there. Hopefully, it's not too thick. A couple drops. That might be a little much. I'm gonna add a little bit of water because that is pretty thick. A couple drops of water, and now I need to stir it with something. I'm going to go ahead and use a paintbrush because um, I'm going to also want to swatch it out. So I wouldn't use like a really soft paintbrush. I'm using a Taclon paintbrush. Isn't that pretty? So basically, you just want to get it mixed up really well. Um, and if you feel like you've got too much liquid in there, if you feel like I feel like I might have a little too much binder, I'm just going to add a little bit more pigment. This stuff lasts a long time too, like if you're using it dry, so don't be too stingy. And I'm going to give it a little drop of water just to make sure it mixes in really well. And then you'll just let it dry out completely before you close it up in a tin. All right, so if you want to check your, uh, your consistency, now obviously when it dries out it'll get a little bit more strong. We'll take a scrap of uh, black paper and what I want is I want to make sure it's opaque. Ooh, that's pretty. And we'll want it to dry before we can, so we can see the true, uh, the true shift, but I am seeing the green to blue, so I think that looks pretty good. And then I've got my two buckets of water, so I'm going to clean my brush in one and then rinse it in the final one and then I'm going to cap this up and we will start to, we'll do we'll do that again and actually I'm going to repeat it for every color that I have here I'm not filling them to the top because I don't know if I would use that much as I use them though I'm going to put them in the box just so I know I've used them let's do uh, let's do this red let's see how that works this color is magenta oftentimes when you buy a duochrome it'll say it'll have like both colors on it so like um it might say like magenta gold or you know blue green or or it might be like opal pink so it might look like the powder might look white in the uh, jar but then it um but then it goes um I'm gonna wipe off my spoon here but then it goes to it will go from pearl and it will shift to red or shift to blue pearl actually used to have a bunch of ink pads that did that but they were on the market long because they did not uh they did not last very long they would dry out and you couldn't revive them so again, we're going to get some of our, whoops, I got on the wrong side of the thing. So I just uh, wiped off my thing there. I took a, a damp paper towel. Damp paper towel. Okay. Um, let's see, let's count the drops. One, two, well, this is pretty thick, so I'd say, uh, it's hard to count drops on this because it's so thick. Basically, you want enough binder in there so that when you, um, yeah, so I'm putting about five drops of 
gum arabic in there it really just depends you just gotta play it by ear now when that dries if i wipe my finger across it and it's too chalky which i don't think it will be but if it is then i could um like see this is too this is too dry um then I could add a little bit more gum arabic to it. It's not really an exact science and it's not that difficult. But you can can you see how that's really dry? It's not mixing in. I need a little bit more binder and a little bit more water. I don't think I'll need to add much water to the other stuff because it's uh it's much more watery. But with this older stuff, I really do. And I just kind of want to use up the older stuff. But you know what? We'll do one with the uh, with the new stuff just so you can see. And then I'll use up the rest of it. And then, uh, then we can come back. In fact, I'll probably let these dry out. Then I'll finish up the video after it's all dried out so you can see the final results. I think I put more powder in here. I think this color was more compact, more dense. So I think that uh, I, think I ended up putting more in there. Yeah, I don't feel like I've got that all stirred up. I might need a, I might need to go get a toothpick. Yeah, I'm gonna need a toothpick. I think I have one though. So I think I got one right here. Hopefully, yes. For my gouache reconstitution video. There we go. Yeah, I probably put a little too much powder in there, to be honest. You could mix it up on a slab, you know, with a muller and all that jazz, but... Boy, that's a mess. Yeah, <laughs> that's more of a mess than I want to make. Okay, let's swatch that out and see how that looks. Ooh, this other one's so pretty. Oh, it's a little dry. I'm just going to add a little bit of water to it on my brush. That might be a little too much water, but... Now let's see, does it, oh yeah, look, it goes from purple to red. Okay, so let's do one with the, um, with the, with um, the new gum Arabic. Because I, because, you know, if you're ordering this to make this project, then you're going to be getting a new bottle, so it's not going to be as thick. So let's do that. There, I've already opened that one, so I'm going to clean off my, my spoon. Had some little um, little ice cream scoops, little tiny like uh, dessert spoons, kind of like you know if you go to a uh, ice cream place and you get a sample. Uh, but I don't know what I did with them. They, I used to keep them in my embossing powder drawer. I have no idea what. Well, maybe they're with my other mica powders. I don't know. I have quite a bit of mica powders, so. I'm not, so I don't feel too precious about these because I have, I have a lot of other mica powders too, so I'm kind of feeling like I want to experiment, but you know, you don't have to do such a large amount. All right, so let's try the new stuff. This is the new gum Arabic. Uh, it's still pretty thick though. Okay, that was about five drops. I'm going to see if I can stir that up. I think I'm still going to need water because it still is pretty thick. And it might not want to dissolve. Yeah, it doesn't want to dissolve perfectly unless you add a little water to that. I might need the toothpick for this one as well because it's... Needs a little help stirring it up. Use the other end. I'll clean them after this. You might want to write on these um, what color pigment you used. That way, you when you go to make them again, you can tell really easily if you have a lot of powders. There, that's mixed up pretty well. That might be a little thin. But let's see. Maybe not. No, actually, it feels pretty good. Okay, let's try that one. Now, if you have too much gum Arabic, what will happen is that um, it might be difficult to re-wet your paint after it dries, and it might be kind of shiny, 
when you, uh, let's see, can we see the shift on that one? That one's not very, I'm not getting a big color change on that one. What's that one called? Maybe it's got a subtle green to gold. I'm not getting a big shift on that one. Let's see. That one is called Golden. It looks like it might be a little bit of a green to gold shift. Maybe as it dries, it'll shift a little bit more, but I'm not seeing that much in that, uh, in that one right there. But again, it's not dry yet and we will see when it's all done. So I'm gonna finish making up these watercolors. Then I think I'll also, when I come back, show you the technique I was telling you about the stamping. And then, uh, yeah, we'll have to find a palette to put these in. Hey, I just wanted to pop in really quick because I've made my watercolors, um, but I also wanted to show you the mess that I've made. This is a messy project. And I decided that with these smaller pots, because I mean, this really like a fifth of the amount of powder in here than in the, um, the first ones that I was doing, even though they don't look that much different in size. Um, there's a lot of like kind of wasted space in the jar. Um, I decided that I would do half pans for the smaller ones. And it is so much messier to do this with half pans than full pans because with the full pans, you just have more mixing room. So just kind of keep that in mind. But <clears throat> I didn't want to make as much with the little ones because I still wanted to have some loose powder for projects. But um, these are my swatches. And because I have so many lights pointed over here, it's kind of hard to see the shift between colors. My dog's playing upstairs. Uh, but maybe if I tip it a few ways, you can see some of the colors and how they shift. Um, I'm, I'm trying to bring this light. Let me try to bring the light a little bit closer so I can hopefully... I tip it away from one light, but there's another one light pointing at it, so it's hard to see. It seems like I got a more um, dramatic shift when I was going from, like, with the wet paint. Like, I guess if I look at each one individually, I can see which way they, what colors they shift to. But it does seem like it gets less dramatic as it dries. So I'm curious to use the powder dry and see if I get a better kind of color shift from that. I mean, they're pretty paints, but like I can see the the like royal blue and purple there, and I can see the kind of purple to green there, and I can see kind of the gold, greenish to golden green there, but they definitely seem to be a little more, well, if I hold it over to the light, I wish I could move my camera. Let me see if I can just haul my light over here. Uh, it seems like you have to kind of have I think having one light would be much better to show the effect because with so many studio lights here, I feel like I'm having lights pointed at them from all directions, so I'm not getting the shift as much. But um, maybe tomorrow we'll turn off all the lights except for one. But I want to let this dry. I want to clean up this mess, let my pans dry out. Uh, it might take a couple days and then I'll show you how to use these dry. And then you can decide whether they might be something for you or if this is a big, <clears throat> big hassle. I actually didn't even use all of this, um, uh, my old gum Arabic there. Gum Arabic is a binder, so it's kind of like a glue. So it's handy for a lot of things in the studio. So um, just to kind of let you know, I forgot. I really don't enjoy making watercolors. <laughs> I can't believe I didn't remember that from the last time we did one of these experience, but um, I think it's going to be really, really uh, pretty when they're done. I mean, I could mix that up a little bit more, but it'll get mixed up when I use it with a brush. And I'm just made such a mess. I just want to uh, to clean up and uh, and start fresh in the morning. So, um, so yeah, I will see you in the morning. All right. I've got to admit this project's getting a little out of hand because I thought, oh, I've got to make a special palette to put these in. And I had done this one um, with alcohol inks and uh, I loved it a couple of years ago and I thought, well, I want to make one that's going to be just for my metallic watercolors. So I've got this big pin here and I'm going to use my alcohol pearls and customize that. So, hey, why not, right? This is, let's just, <laughs> let's just do it, right? Let's just do it. I'm seeing how many alcohol pearls I have. Those were something I bought. I was so excited about them. And then I realized, you know, I really didn't use them that much. I also have a My Mary, I think it's my, no, not My Mary Blue, My Marabou Iridescent Alcohol Ink that is really cool. Um, I think that's what I used. I think I used this with regular alcohol inks on a, on a tin that I spray painted white. 
or I made it inked white. I can't remember. I did a video on this when I made it. It had horrendous watercolors in it, but I loved the, the tin because it was white. And then I just put my Da Vinci watercolors in here. Um, and I want to keep that for that because I, I do like that tin for that. But um, I was like, ooh, let's, uh, let's see what we can do here. So I think I'll do kind of like a rainbow, a rainbow thing. So you got to shake these up. They have little ball bearings in them. And uh, yeah, I'm going to try decorating this tin. It's a little scuffed up. It's an old Arteza tin. And I just took the guts out of that. I'm not going to put it in a baggie. I never use that paint, but sometimes it's nice just to have it for if I do get another paint to review and I suspect it's the same thing. I was on the fence whether I wanted to sell this set or not, but I don't know. It was pretty well used and I didn't know. I figured, you know, for what I would sell it for, I would just keep it for the tin. So let's see. I'm going to try not to spill. I want to do a rainbow. This is probably going to take a while to dry, so that's why I want to do that now so that I can put all of my watercolors in this tin that are metallic. And, um, and the other thing is I found a bunch of Perlex interference colors. I'm like, oh, I want to do those too. So this, this is just one of those projects that's getting a little out of hand. <laughs> but that's all right. Oh, I should make sure I have enough. I should make sure that I have enough colors. I'm pretty sure I have a purple in there too. Let me get these shook, shooken up and then we'll come back and we'll finish squirting this out. All right, I actually don't have a, a purple. You know what I think I did? I think I bought two sets of um of the inks and they were sets of three so yeah that makes sense i only have six but i do have the the medium so i'm just going to use the medium and another color i hope this uh, oh they're already starting to dry though um oh yeah i want to keep the cover off because i'm probably going to add more this was one of those like I think I bought it because I was going to just do a DIY version, like with mica, like the powders we've been using, and alcohol ink. And then, I don't know what happened, I guess, uh, I guess I didn't think that one grew very well or something because it's like, it, it never, it never happened. Whoops. You know, we have the best, we have the best plans. I was at a stamp show. Sometimes, Oh, that's pretty, that's just the, the iridescent. So it's like, uh, actually, I feel like that's something we all mixed up. Ooh, this one's stinky. Or maybe they're all stinky, but I noticed it when I, oh no, that one's way stinkier. I noticed it when I uncapped this one. Oh, let me add some of those in there too, just for a little extra. Okay, I'm gonna leave that uncapped right now. Woo, lordy. That's got a, that's got a big whiff to it. And maybe add a little bit of blue in there. Okay, I don't know how I should. Ooh, maybe just kind of. Oh, you know what? I probably should have used my little uh, felt felt thingies. That would have made sense. I'm gonna go grab those. I'm so full of ideas today. I don't know if any of them are good ones though. <laughs> Some more of that in there. I probably should have done that. Well, I did just shake them up. I'm like, oh. Probably should have the caps back on so I could just make sure to shake them up. Oh, you know what? I don't think the felt's going to work that great on this black because it's going to thin it out too much. But it might allow me to kind of guide where I want everything, though. I'll probably give this a coating of... Um, of... polycrylic or something when it's when I'm happy with it I should have painted this white first but I thought like because the um because the pearls being a little bit on the opaque side that I wouldn't really need to but oh that's pretty isn't it um but I probably put I should, probably should have and then I wouldn't have needed maybe not needed as much but this is something I've been wanting to try all right so I'm going to go in and put more ink down. I'm going to throw those felts away. 
Um, well, I'm gonna, if I get ink on my fingers, not the end of the world. I'm just gonna try to guide it around a little bit. It's a little chunky, it's kind of skimmed up a little bit. I wonder if the, um, well, it's probably the mica in there. I just wonder if there's like more of a, of a binder or resin or something in the, and while it's still wet, I'm going to do a little bit of the, the mica. I want kind of a galaxy look. Ooh, that, see, this, the, the iridescent, what's it called? Rainbow? This is called Rainbow, uh, from My Mary, not My Mary, Marabou. That's really nice. It's got a really pretty effect. What a crazy, crazy chaotic tutorial this is. Call it Iridescent Workshop or something. <laughs> I don't even know what feature this is, if this is going to be like a, t oh, a standalone tutorial or Frugal Friday because we're making our own stuff or what. So wherever it ends up, <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> I like to play with stuff like this though and it's nice I had a really busy week and it's nice to have a little free time at the end where I can kind of just explore because I've got all my work work done I do a little bit of that on there too I have a feeling this is gonna have a weird texture to it but you know a couple coats of polyacrylic will help and I use a polyacrylic because sometimes with alcohol inks um, I've had a situation where Sometimes, depending on what you coat over it, it can be sticky, but with polyacrylic, it doesn't seem to do it. The alcohol ink, it is a water-based medium, even though it's like, it's alcohol is the, you, you can dissolve it, not dissolve it, but you can thin it out with water. So, um, but once it's dry, it's permanent. And I've used like some varnishes over alcohol ink and then it's sticky. Um, same thing with polymer clay. I'm not sure exactly what it is in there, but it reacts. But there's no reaction if I do like a polycrylic over it. Oh, that's so pretty. I love that. It's almost like underwater. Ooh, this is fun. Okay, I'm so glad I kept that Arteza tin just for the fact that I had a tin to experiment with. And then this doesn't have any mica in it, so maybe I should do some of this on. Actually, I think that's the prettiest without just using the plain alcohol ink and then just using the iridescent medium, I think actually looks the prettiest. What do you think? I could go in with some just plain alcohol inks on there too. That's, pr I think that's really pretty actually. I'm gonna try any of those. As it's drying, I'm going to put in a little bit more of the white, the just the rainbow. Oh, you know what? I probably should have put gold there because that's got a warmer undertone. Oh, I love it. I think this is so pretty. I'll always know which ones are my handmade, uh, my homemade inks too. My homemade watercolors because of the homemade tin. And then if I do have any really messy, whoops, was that the, oh, that was the purple cap. Ah, I'm making such a mess. Um, I can clean off the edges with alcohol before I polycrylic it. Look at that, that's cute. That's not gonna take too long to dry. Um, so what I can do is I can take a Q-tip and I can take some, rubbing alcohol and actually you could miss if you're not happy with that you could just mist it with the with the um you could mist it with alcohol and you could um you could kind of reactivate all the ink if you wanted to mess with it some more but I'm actually pretty happy with that I'm just going to clean off the edges and then once it's fully dry I'm going to paint on a coat of the glossy polycrylic by Minwax I think I'll clean that up too. I don't think I like that in between. I thought I was gonna like that, but I don't think I do. It's very forgiving. But anyway, we're gonna let this dry and then we're gonna go back. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna make some watercolors out of these Perlex ones. I had a thought. Um, you know what? I really like that. The ones in the smaller container seem to be a nicer 
chameleon powder. They seem to be more chameleon-y than, uh, than the ones I did in the half pans, although it was way easier to mix in that. Um, I think what I would do if I were you, if you were going to buy these just to make watercolors, I would just add the gum arabic and water right into that and just let them dry with the caps off. Put them in a little, little uh, box or something. That makes way more sense. Kind of like twinkling H2O's, if you remember that product. But anyway, let's let this dry. I'll be back uh, with all my things made and then uh, we will, I'll show you how to use them dry. All right, it's actually been a couple days and uh, you can kind of see the finished watercolors here. So um, this is a swatch we were doing as we were making the colors and you can see it's nice and nice and shiny. Um, and then I've got some on the back, which are my Perlex. I think those are all Perlex colors here, the duochromes and interference. And then um, because you only see kind of like one aspect of it on black. I let them dry over the weekend and then I made um, a swatch on black and white watercolor paper and this is how I arrange my palette. I just put little um, little magnet on the back and um, I wrote on the side like what the color was so if I used it up and I wanted to make more. Um, this is Interference Green by Perlex, so I put a P-E on the end if it's a Perlex mica powder. I have so many different mica powders, so like, um, just to show you for example, these, this row of 10 there are the um, Let's Resin set of 10 chameleon powders, and then these 12, uh, is it 12? Let's see, I think I do have 12 there, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So 10 of these are the um, Let's Resin Intense Chameleon Powders, and then a couple others must be Perlex because um, because I only have have uh, 10 of those as well. Um, and then these three here are Perlex Duochrome, so they shift like between, like this one goes from pink to blue, so it's blue on black and it's pink on white. This one's green on black or blue on white. This one's gold on black and uh, green on white. And then these are Interference, which they barely show up except for just a hint of a sparkle on white. I don't even know if the camera will pick that up, but on black they show up um, their color and then they will shift a little bit. The color shifting uh, properties are not super um, apparent on the uh, on the watercolor paper, but um, but still they have a little bit of an iridescence. Like these are really sparkly iridescent colors. These um, these chameleon colors, and they'll go. You'll be able to see like here will go from like silver to kind of greenish gold color, and. Uh, that one goes from gold to green depending on how I like bend it to the light or how I shift it. Uh, this kind of goes a little uh, like kind of like blue to purple. I don't know. You're probably seeing the shift a little bit differently because of where you're looking at the uh, colors from. But it's subtle. It's not as like hit you over the head. This one is goes blue to pink. That's kind of that's kind of cool. Um, a lot of these have kind of an iridescent quality or a holographic quality because they have like that uh, that kind of more. Um, uh, movement inducing sparkle because of the uh, the way the particles are. Then you get some that are more pearly that don't really shift, you know, quite as extremely. Um, but uh, something I thought was really interesting with the, some of these interference colors, I had um, uh, some Arteza. I had like, let's see, five Arteza colors and five Perlex colors, and four out of them are pretty much identical. So um, that's why I put them like this because like this, um, this Perlex color is almost identical to this Arteza color. This Perlex color and this Arteza color are almost identical. This Perlex and this Arteza. And the greens are a little bit different actually, so I put them side by side. Um, but that way I just will know if I use up one of these not to make a whole nother one because I could just use the other pan and then refill the bigger pan when it's done. But this is kind of fun because these have a little bit um, more individual qualities and just your typical pearl or metallic watercolors. So I thought it would be just really fun to make these. Plus I've been drooling over the Kiritake pearl colors. So I'm like, I could, I have these interference colors. I bet they're very similar to what those are. So um, I would do those. So, I mean, you hear chameleon referring to any sort of powder or pigment that shifts colors. Duochrome usually shifts between two colors. Um, sometimes you'll hear about multichrome, generally in makeup, and that can shift to multiple colors, almost like a holographic effect. And then you have interference, which will often go from a color to pearl. So um, 
it just, you know, it just depends on uh, the look that you're after. Uh, like these are Perlex Duochromes, these are Perlex Interference. Um, but my, I think my favorite are the ones that have like a little bit more of a sheer sparkle to them because then I can paint them over other things like fairy wings or um, even skin tones or whatever just to give it a little bit of a life and sparkle. So that's what I ended up with. So as promised, I'm going to show you how to use the powders in a different way. And I, uh, I got some black cardstock here, just some smooth black cardstock. And I've got a big rubber stamp with a nice pretty kind of like flourishy background there. I'm going to put this on my rock -a block I hope this is sticky enough to, uh, I hope it's clingy enough to stick to it. If not, I might you'll add a little bit of water and get it to stick. Ah, yeah, well maybe if I just missed it with a little bit of water it'll stick. I don't know. We'll try it. We'll give it a try. It looks like I might have put glue stick on it the last time I used it. There, I think that'll make enough suction. And then what you want to use when you want to just use the chameleon powders on their own, um, or any mica powder, it could be, it could be, um, it could be this. It could be eyeshadow powdered out eyeshadow from the the Dollar Tree. I mean, that'll work too. I actually made some. I we can swatch these out later if you want. I made some from a few years ago. This tutorial on my channel. I made some from just some Dollar Tree eyeshadow. I'll just add a little water to that, and we can I can show you that in a minute. But um. For this, all you do is use a clear ink, or you can use glycerin. I don't know if this is sticking to my block very well, but... It will work for the purposes today. You just want to give it a good coating of clear ink, or sponge on some glycerin, and what that's going to do is just make a sticky surface for our powder to adhere to. And... I'm just going to roll that on. And you can kind of see the design if I tip it to the light. Maybe you see that a little bit. All right, I'm just gonna take, um, I probably should open these ahead of time, but you can use multiple colors. These all come with little brushes, but you could use like even a makeup brush. Makeup brush would work really well because it's soft. And then you just brush it over there. Isn't that pretty? And see how it just sticks to where we've put the... I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Ooh, there we go. You can see it wants to stick to where we've put the powder. And a little goes a long way. Always use a dry brush. Isn't that cool? This is one of my favorite techniques. Now you could uh, mix some gum, powdered gum arabic into your powders. And then when you're all done, just spritz it with water. Or you can, after you're done with this, you can spritz it with some fixative or some hairspray uh, to kind of seal the powders from getting stuck on your hands. Let me do a little bit of this. Uh, ooh, do a little this magenta. That's a really fun effect. I really love it for like holiday cards. Um, but yeah, you probably do want to spray it with something just so you don't end up people getting it all over their hands when they get the cards. Um, so if you add the powdered gum arabic to the powder and you brush it on like this, all you do is mist it with water because that will activate the gum arabic. And um, I think that's the best use of the powdered stuff because it can just kind of get, uh, I kind of want to try one of these more intense ones, um, because it just kind of gets, uh, it just can get moldy if you don't, if you wet a bunch of the powdered stuff. That's why I don't like to use it when I'm making when I'm making um, stuff. Oh yeah, look at that. These in, the, the intense chameleon powders do seem to be a little bit more um, showy. But this is such a fun way to use these. And you don't have to, you know, you don't have to make watercolors. You can just kind of do this. And I think you get a really cool effect on the smoother paper, like cardstock. So let me just kind of uh, tap that off, the excess off. There shouldn't be a lot of excess. Um, and you can also just kind of wipe it with a tissue, but let's kind of pretty pearly effect there. You can see the shift a lot more on the smooth paper. See how like, like right here, it's purple, then it's pink. Especially on the intense ones, especially on that purple one, the, the one at the end that goes from purple to pink. So... Yeah, I think I think because of the texture of the watercolor paper, it kind of um, 
it kind of just gives you more of a metallic look than having as much of a shift. It, I think it's just due to the roughness of the paper. Um, and then what you could do, like if before you spray this with any, um, what are you going to spray it with? Either water if you've added gum arabic or hairspray if you haven't. You could just kind of wipe it over with a with a tissue to get any of the leftover stuff off there. And I know it doesn't look as impressive on camera, but it does look really pretty in real life. And that's such an easy way to do a beautiful background. And as promised, we will see how this looks. This is one of my homemade powders with um, with eyeshadow from the dollar the dollar store. And it's not going to be quite as uh, as pearly, but it's not bad. You know, that still would give you a really nice effect. I would look for ones that have mica as the first ingredient. Um, like if I'm looking at this one right here, I don't know if I can still read the ingredients. Uh, it was probably on the, um, it was probably on the, um, on the outside packaging, but you know, you can do a really nice pearlescent watercolor that way too. But let's also, I'll show you on the, uh, the Dollar Tree one. I just gotta, I just gotta get myself a little bit more, just gotta stamp a little bit of design on there so I can, so I can do it. Um, these actually come with little brushes, which is really handy. Hold on, let me just kinda make sure I get some on there. But see, you can brush that right over this, the design and do the same thing. Actually, it smells kind of nice too. Where there's like no fragrance in your Perlex, this has a little bit of a pleasant, a pleasant smell to it. Not quite as shimmery, but uh, not bad. Definitely a good option if you're on a budget and you want to try some of this out. I mean, look at that. That's still really pretty. It's a, yeah, you know, you still got some nice reflection on there. So, you know, there's plenty of different ways of, although I will say that, um, the powders have gotten a lot cheaper online. Um, like I was mentioning, Let's Resin, these kits from Let's Resin, um, it used to, Perlex used to be so expensive and that was really the only game in town. And now there's so many options for mica powders and pearl powders and you don't even have to get little containers. You can get like little baggies of it. Um, very affordably, uh, affordably. And like I said, I'd recommend you leave this open and let it dry out fully before you put it away. Um, every time you use it. Now, I think the reason I've had some metallics go moldy in the past is because I think they used to use, um, fish scales in some of them. Like they used to use that in cosmetics. And I think they used to use it on the, uh, on some of the watercolors, the, um, metallic watercolors as well. And I think that's why I would get that mildew issue. Um, I haven't had it with any of my recent metallic watercolors I've purchased or with any of the ones that I've made, but, um, but it's just a good idea. Let them dry out before you close it up. Plus it'll help keep your tin from rusting too, if you get any, uh, extra water on your tins. But I think these were fun to make. Uh, I think I'll enjoy using them. You can mix these with your regular watercolors and get that kind of like a uh, layered effect that's really popular and expensive right now, like supervision is doing. Um, so it's funny, just kind of play with these supplies. If you have them, see what sort of effects you can get. And if you are looking to add some of these colors, um, I think the intense, like the sets of five intense chameleon powders are a little bit more, um, and more juicy. I don't know. They're just more, um, uh, they're, I don't know, more showy, I guess, than the set of 10, which are larger jars, but you do get so much more in the, um, in the set of 10 per jar. You get five times the amount per jar in the set of 10. So, but you know, shop around, there's all kinds of different, um, different versions, but if you do want something that's going to have a little bit of a shift, or look a little different on black and white, then go for the chameleon because then you'll get that like pink to blue or the green to gold or blue to gold or, you know, those little subtle shifts there if that's important to you. But uh, it's a lot of fun to make your own supplies and play. I don't know if it's necessarily any cheaper than buying a set of pre-made uh, metallic watercolors, but uh, you get a really good quality when you make them yourself and, and it's fun.
So I'll have all the materials that you need for this project linked down below if you want to try it. If not, I hope you just enjoyed hanging out with me and making paint for a while. And uh, if you do go out and buy, buy powders, try this technique. It's so much fun. And I'd say that would be the big reason to go with getting the powders and making your own rather than buying a set of metallic watercolors is that you've got that option. You can use them dry. That's so pretty. I was just going to do this as a throwaway, but I think I'm going to have to cut that out and actually <laughs> use it on a card because it's so pretty. Um, yeah, you have a little more versatility this way and I always think it's fun to make supplies and it's also fun to use supplies so you just get a little you get a you get the best of both worlds and uh even though I was grumbling at first like when I was making these because I was making such a mess and uh and everything uh this was a fun project um and as I use these up I'll make more I didn't make full pans of like I didn't fill anything to the top um, and I don't necessarily think you need to, and this isn't going to be like something you use every day, but it is definitely fun. And I'll show you the, how the tin came out. I did, uh, so I did the, we did the alcohol ink together. Um, all I did after that was I put on some polycrylic and I wasn't happy with the gloss I was getting. So I went and got my UV resin, which is actually a, a Let's Resin little kit that has a little light and the resin. You probably saw me use that on some charms. And since I had it, I'm like, I'm going to do that because then it'll be dry in a snap. And so I, I just kind of did resin um, on the top and then I sprinkled in some of these clear stars because I thought they were pretty and then cooked it into the light. I kept moving the light because this is really big and the light kind of will straddle it. So I would just kind of move it over a couple times um, as I clicked it. And then I actually put it outside in the bright sun because there were some areas that were feeling a little sticky and I wanted to make sure it really got cooked. Pardon me. Um, so that worked out really well and uh, but if you don't have that you could use um, you can use a polycrylic no problem but I had resin so I'm like oh I'm gonna do that because I'll get more of a shine and I had some unevenness from the ink uh, just the ink kind of globbing up and drying and reconstituting and stuff as I added more ink uh, so that just kind of gave me a little bit better of an effect and I could go over this one more time to get a perfectly smooth uh, cover but um, yeah, I can't be bothered. I think this looks fine. Um, but there you have it. Very simple projects. Great way to, to spice up your tins. And if you have, if you're going to get the mica powders, um, and you have regular alcohol ink, you could just mix those together. Like take a pearl, just a plain pearl mica powder, mix it with your ink and make your own alcohol pearls. Or, or mix it with like, mix your blue alcohol ink with one of these, you know, kind of blue colors and do it that way. So you don't have to buy the alcohol pearls if you want to just make it yourself with, since you're getting the micas, it, or since you have the micas anyway for a project like this. So experiment and have fun. It's all this, I mean, that's what alcohol pearls, pearls are. They're mica plus alcohol ink. You can do that too. You know, you can do, you can do it all. And swatch it out and have the swatch handy so that when you do use your palette, you know what you're going to get when you dip into those paints. They do show up fairly accurately, I think, in the pans. But, um, like stuff like the, the interference ones, those can be kind of tricky, especially depending on if you're, if you're doing a painting or like maybe a marker illustration and you have like a, a sorcerer with a black robe on, then, you know, you might want to have that to see like, well, if I paint that color, that's what it's going to show. If I do one of these glittery colors, that's what it's going to show when you overcoat it. Um, so it's just a good idea to have a swatch and to swatch on both black and white, in my opinion. Um, and that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy these kind of uh, mad sciencey, artsy videos. So I'll know if people are interested in more of them. And until um, next time, happy crafting!